Hey, uh, my name is Amir. I'm a stand-up comic from Melbourne. I'm part of a duo called Fear of a Brown Planet, and we just played the Darwin Festival yesterday. Uh, Nazim and I both started comedy together. We entered a, an amateur competition in uh, the Melbourne Comedy Festival called Raw, and we both just kind of went through the heats. It's kind of like a Australian idol of comedy. Anyone can sign up, and you just do round after round after round. And after that, we just decided to put this show together called Fear of a Brown Planet because Nazim did it, <laughs> and because and because it's like Australian idol, like the first heats are so bad. There's like you know, out of ten people, there'll be like maybe one or two good people and just eight just train wrecks. <laughs> and so I saw Nazim do it one week and he went through his round and I literally just thought, yeah, I'll, go. I'll try that. And then I did it the next week and I got through and then we went, we went through the competition together because I failed it a little. <laughs> no, like I got my degree, but I, I tried it out for a couple of months and I just, I couldn't do it. Like I could not do it day to day. Simple. We're both right-handed. You're both right-handed. Right so right-handed people will probably hold the mic in their left hand because oh. they're more expressive with their rest yes. with their right hand. Mm. But that's very perceptive. In fact, just yesterday during soundcheck, because Nazim and I haven't performed in a while, we both got on stage and we were like, "What hand do we hold the mic? Is it the left? Is it the right?" <laughs> and we had about five minutes trying to remember which hand we hold. We're both left-handed with the mic. Okay. Who inspires me? Um, the people. <laughs> Sorry. Um, a lot of people, like, you know, obviously, like, we have our um, comic inspirations. So, you know, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, Richard Pryor, Margaret Cho, you know, all the, all the you know, the big sort of political acts in comedy history, Bill Hicks, obviously. Um, but obviously, like, we're also very political, and, you know, I did a lot of political stuff before I ever got into comedy. So I have a lot of sort of just activist heroes, I guess, like, people who've always sort of been involved in some kind of change. Only after the show, like last night when people told me there's army barracks down the street. No, th this is the thing, like when, when we write our show, since day one, when we've always written the show, we never wrote it to upset people or to push boundaries. We always just wrote it in a way that we thought would be funny. You know, like when we listen to the political comedy that we love, we don't feel challenged by it, we just think, yeah, that's how, that's, that's how I think, that's, that's what I think about the world, and that's how we write our jokes. Um, so it's kind of hard to see um, how upset people will get, because we are really writing for ourselves and our friends. Um, and someone came up to me after the show yesterday and said, you know, um, there must have been some military people in the audience who wouldn't have liked what you said, and you know, you'd probably enjoy that. And I said, not really. Like, I, I don't enjoy making people uncomfortable. I'd, I'd much rather people liking what we have to say and, you know, understanding what we're saying rather than just getting offended by it or just getting upset by it. Because I can't play music. <laughs> but if I could play music, I definitely would have pursued that first. That's a good question. <laughs> I, I think... Yeah, I think racism can be overcome, but I think it will take a long, long time. So I don't think, you know, like people think that one magic event will happen that will cause racism to end. Like we'll elect the first black president or we'll say sorry to Aboriginal people or, you know, there'll be one landmark moment where, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years of history and conditioning and, you know, structures are just going to collapse overnight. It's impossible. Um, I think it would just take a very, very long time and a lot of work and um, a lot of dedication to actually make, ra you know, overcome, you know, systemic racism. But I think, of course, it's possible. If, it, if I didn't think it was possible, then I, like, we just wouldn't bother saying anything. You know, we'd just live with it. But it must be possible because we've seen racist structures be overcome in the past. I would say, yeah, I would say that um, for young people countering racism or fighting racism, you know, it's it's the same as any kind of bullying on any level. Like if people are being bullied because of their gender or their sexuality or their race, like the thing is always to talk about it. So I think being silent about it, whether you witness it or you're a victim of it, that allows it to continue. So I think young people, you know, of all backgrounds should realize that if they witness that kind of thing or if they see it happening, then they should, they should challenge it. Um, I think that's the only way um, 
to stop it, really, you know. And, and that applies, again, like, to, to victims and, and people who see it happening. Like, if, if everyone's got a responsibility to talk about it. Uh, yeah, just, just to not be scared. Not be scared, because everyone's scared. Like, everyone is scared when they start. People see comedians and they think, oh, they must have been born just being able to walk on stage. I mean, even the most accomplished comedians will get scared before they walk on stage, even after they're famous. So, like, yeah, I would just say that that you just have to overcome your fear and, and, and give it a shot, because it's always going to make you a little bit nervous. I was nervous last night before I won, but never performed in Darwin, and it was really one of the best shows we've ever done. What would I tell my 17 year old self? Don't go to law school, go directly to comedy open mic night, save yourself six years of pain, and become famous 10 years earlier. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ahmed from Fear of a Brown Planet and you are watching Grind Online.